Hi everyone, this is Josiah at Mock Motion. I'm going to demonstrate with you today the integration that we have with our Siemens PLC systems. Um, we've got a very similar integration on the Allen Bradley platform and uh, several other platforms soon to come. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through our Siemens interface here real quick today. Um, just some of the basics. Um, we've basically got set up 64 uh, sequence blocks in your PLC that allow you to integrate that directly with your G-code or with other features within your control system and then you can do whatever you would like to do within ladder logic when that sequence is triggered. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some of the basic ways we utilize that. Uh, if you look at our G-code here in the control system I've got M225 that's a sequence call macro that we've built and then we've got 226 is a sequence wait macro and then you're going to pass it an S parameter for which sequence you would like to call and which sequence you want to wait for. And then we've got a couple other optional parameters that you can pass. I've got commented out here. I'll talk you through those in a second. Um, so if I run this, this is going to call um, the sequence call macro, and we're going to call sequence number one. Um, I'll talk you through a little bit more detail in a second here. But So if we walk through here, this runs all the way through this immediately it completes immediately and we're back to the top of the g-code file. Um, let me step over to the PLC side now. This is one of those sequence blocks I was talking about. Um, we're naming it sequence number one. That's a parameter input to the block. Um, and then we've got a couple other parameters that this block will either have input to it on the left side or as an output from the block on the right side. So when the macro runs and calls the sequence number one, this uh, internal bit, I've got these named as a table, but really you could use any internal memory register or this could go straight to an output from the PLC. Uh, but when you call this sequence, your sequence bit is going to light up as active. Uh, so I've got this dropped into ladder logic here as a set of contacts. This will go active. And then as soon as you do whatever you want in your ladder logic, when you decide that you're done with it, what, with the feature that you were wanting to call, you can internally light up the sequence done bit. I've got that tagged back to the block here as the sequence done input to this block. And then that will return to this waiting macro, and then your G-code can continue. Um, so as a demonstration here, we can drop a timer block into our code. Um, let me put this right here between the start, we're going to start a timer. Let's wait for uh, two seconds. Um, and then when the timer completes, it's going to close this done output memory bit. That will come back to uh, this sequence done. It looks like I accidentally dropped this wrong place. Let me patch that. Um, let me download this to the PLC. And these internal blocks, I'll walk you through a little bit more of them in a second, but these internal blocks, this is a preloaded library that we ship out in all of our Siemens PLCs. Um, you'll get this with any of our VMC controls or any of our uh, lathe turret systems. Uh, we kind of have some canned uh, operations for your tool chain system, and then this kind of allows you to set up uh, maybe your oiler or a chuck, a tail stock, that kind of stuff that's a little more uh, custom that you want to tailor towards your machine. Um, so here if we start to the top of this g-code file and I run this again you can see the start bit is lit up we're waiting on the timer when that completed the g-code completed we can watch that again here we're sitting here waiting for the sequence to complete it waited two seconds and then we continue through uh, so this could be used in a lot of different ways you could put this throughout your g-code for different features that you want to do maybe you want it to pause in your g-code until you press some input or until um, an analog uh, scale reaches a certain level. Maybe you want to wait for a flow sensor to say that you've got enough coolant in the system and then you'll continue on in your G-code. Uh, really the possibilities are endless there for you as a user in your ladder logic. We're trying to tie together the tools and give you uh, the integration that you need between the CNC system and the PLC ladder logic system so that you can easily seamlessly integrate them. So you've got up to 64 of these sequences. We, this is what your canned system is going to look like when we ship it to you. So you've got, six, uh, you've got sequence number one and sequence number two here. And then I think we give you sequence number 19, and you can put anything in between there. Those are your user sequences you can use for whatever little canned features you'd like to add to the system. 
um, and then within our own operation block we have a bunch of the more uh, basic features that you're more likely to see. This is a VMC system you're seeing here. So this has your shuttle in, shuttle out sequence. These are kind of tied into our system and these will be utilized throughout the tool change. Uh, for more in-depth view on this, uh, stay tuned for some upcoming later videos we've got. Okay, now I'd like to go more into the optional parameters we mentioned. Let me condiment these back into this G-code file. I'm going to remove the parentheses around them. So we're passing a V. That's the memory location in the PLC that we want to pass it to. And then this is the actual data that we want to pass down to the PLC. So when the sequence number gets called, uh, there's also going to be a volatile memory address number one. Uh, these are access you can use this data get block that we have canned for you in our library I'm gonna drop this out here in your network I'm gonna address this to position number one that's the same position that we're sending the data to I'm sorry this is the start bit we're gonna have it read all the time um, and the index is position number one and then we pass the data we're gonna make a temp variable here um, temp data for demo. So we're going to name it. It says that's not a current variable. We're going to define it as a internal variable. So now this, if we download this to the PLC, when I run this G code, let me load. It's dropping it into the PLC. Now when I run this G code file, you see this temp data is immediately passed to 500. That's the value that we passed in the G code. If I edit this, we make this a 1000. Oh. As soon as we, this is a 500, as soon as we press cycle start, it's going to pass a 100. So this is an easy way that you could, we could send information from the CNC control system down to the PLC we could send the uh, current XY positions to the PLC. We could send any kind of analog data that we had um, or number of parts we were going to run, and then the PLC could pick up on that and, and do its sequencing um, along with what the CNC control system is, is operating under. We've got a lot of other blocks here in the PLC in our canned libraries that we give you. Um, I'm going to demonstrate a couple of these. And then for more information, why don't you just give us a call and we will talk you through any of the other features you're interested in. Um, this is our control axis position block. This gets passed all day long what the current position of the machine is. So I'm going to make some local variables here. X position, Y. We're just going to call them pause. X, Y, Z. B and C just to stay consistent okay and then I'm gonna assign all these some local memory space I'm gonna assign each one of those it gave it a memory address internally I'm gonna download this to the PLC <laughs> okay, so the current position of each axis is saying is zero. If I go over here into machine coordinates, that is correct. If I jog the machine from my on screen jog here, the X, I'm going to jog over 0 0.1, 0 0.358. My we're sitting at 2.28. That's my x position. I can jog the y-axis. So this is just kind of kind of a neat thing that you don't usually see in your PLC systems. We've got integrated straight in here. At any point in time, you could monitor the axis position within your ladder logic and easily set something with internal here. Of let's let's do this real quick to demonstrate. We could say if the x-axis is greater than throw this out here. 
if the x position I didn't move drop that on let's say if the x position is greater than the y position then we'll close and we'll do um, uh, q 0 dot 0. We'll turn on an output. Let's not use that one. Q0.1 Okay, just for demonstration purposes, we're going to do Q0.0. This will be our spindle forwards bit. Um, this is on a desk PLC here, uh, but just to demonstrate to you guys. Here this goes. Okay, so if the X position is greater than the Y position, it's not currently. But if we jog the X value back, oh, greater than, if we jog the Y position back, as soon as the X position is greater than the Y, we can turn on outputs based on the machine's position. So maybe we've got a coolant spray from the right side of the table and a coolant spray from the left side. And as you travel past a certain point, you want to switch which nozzle you activate. You could put solenoids from your PLC system and you could easily switch back and forth between which uh, coolant nozzle you're going to run based on your X axis position. Uh, we've got several other blocks like this that we can monitor the control state so we can see whether it's enabled, whether it's idle, whether it's jogging. Um, we can get the data like we showed in that G-code file. Um, we can do messages from the PLC back up to the control system. So let's do, instead of this, um, let me slide over here, instead of the turning the spindle on, let me delete that, we'll drop a message block in here. And we'll say as soon as the x-axis is greater than the y-axis, we're going to send message number one. Oh, I'm sorry, this is going to go right here. And we're going to do a comparison on the start bit. Okay, if the X position is greater than the Y position, then we're going to send message number one to the control system. Or we'll send message number six. And you can you can index these messages, and then within the control system, you set up what that message is going to do. So let me go over here to some of our... Don't get, don't get hung up in this too much. Um, I'm just trying to demonstrate what some of the capabilities of the PLC system is. And if you want more info on that, we can go into there. So I'm going to set the Modbus device. And we're going to look at look at PLC message number six. Set up the action. I want to throw a warning and say let's do a feed hold. We'll print to the screen message six is active. And save that. 
Okay, we're gonna down. I think we already did. Yep, load this into the PLC. Hope it looks like that was active immediately. Let me bypass that and we'll make it not active for a second so you can see it trigger. So on the PLC, we're going to jog the Y axis back so it's greater than the X axis. Okay, the messages are all cleared. If the Y axis ever jogs greater than the X axis, we get a warning message. Message 6 is active, and it's going to feed hold the system if that were to ever happen. So it's kind of a goofy demo system here, but you get the concept. You can really easily monitor different conditions within the PLC and be able to message um, statuses back up to the control system and create an error condition just within seconds of a setup here. Um, so that's our message system. I'm going to skip over a couple of these. Um, Okay, so that's our message system. That's a real handy thing. That's something that could easily take a lot of integration on a serial system um, with some... So that's our message system real quick, and that is really handy. This is Josiah with Mock Motion. I hope this has been useful. Until next time.